we talk about our opioid problem, it's important to understand that what we're dealing with is an epidemic of opioid addiction, meaning a sharp increase in the number of Americans suffering from the condition of opioid addiction. There are two age groups that have been affected. We have a younger group and an older group. The younger group of people who've become opioid addicted are mostly people in their 20s and 30s who have developed opioid addiction either from taking opioid pain medicine for recreational purposes, abusing the drug to experience the effect, or taking an opioid pain medicine as prescribed by a doctor, or they developed addiction a little bit from both ways. There might be a medical exposure uh, for wisdom teeth, sports injury. The young person likes the effect, uses recreationally for some period of time, and then becomes addicted. Regardless of how the young person develops their addiction to opioids, once addicted, they need to maintain their opioid supply. And they have a very hard time doing that visiting doctors and dentists. Doctors don't like giving healthy-looking 25-year-olds a large quantity of opioid pain medicine on a monthly basis. That really makes a doctor uncomfortable. So young people who are becoming opioid addicted very quickly wind up on the black market in order to maintain their opioid supply. And what we know is that on the black market, prescription opioids are very expensive. Young people who need to maintain their opioid supply have been switching to heroin because it's more cost effective. A $10 bag of heroin will do what a $30 pill would do. And what we've seen happen over the past 20 years is that young people in regions of the country where heroin is available have switched, and heroin has moved into more regions of the country where it wasn't previously available to meet the demand for it by these young people who have become opioid addicted and now need to maintain their opioid supply. There's also an older group of Americans who have become opioid addicted over the past 20 years. These are people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. This older group is mostly developing opioid addiction through medical use of, of opioids. Very often, the opioids start off as a prescription for an acute pain problem. The patient stays on the opioid and then becomes a chronic pain patient on long-term opioids. This older group, when they become addicted, they don't generally have a hard time finding doctors who will prescribe them a large quantity of pills on a monthly basis. And even when the patient's own primary care doctor may begin to get uncomfortable, the doctor doesn't want to put that label, that, that stigmatized label on, on their patient. And the patient will often explain the aberrant drug-taking behavior as being caused by a worsening of their pain. The patient is saying, I took extra pills because my pain was worse. And what we see very often is that the primary care doctors are referring these patients to pain specialists rather than for addiction treatment. And something that's not very well known is that when we compare the overdose death rate in that older group that can obtain pills more easily from doctors to the overdose death rate in the younger group that's been switching to heroin, we actually see significantly more overdose deaths in that older group, even with this very dangerous heroin that's available today that, that's um, especially dangerous because of fentanyl that's being mixed into it. Despite that very dangerous heroin supply, we still see more overdose deaths from prescription opioids.